Good evening, everyone. On tonight's show, we take a look at the Next Level Baseball Academy. Also, we took a look at the SCORE Interactive Sports Exhibit and crowned this week's Player of the Week. All this and more right now. It's Game On. Welcome to Game One. I'm Jordan Harrison. And I'm Marcus Path. Baseball is a sport that requires crisp technique. Whether you're hitting, pitching, or fielding, it's something that you all young players should want to improve. Reporter Katie McLean takes a look at a local baseball academy that can help you better your craft. The Next Level Baseball Academy is excited to provide Southern Nevada with a great place to train, hit, and learn the sport of baseball. We've got kids as young as probably six and seven that do our classes. We have a few of the girls' fast pitch softball teams that come in. Very talented kid. I, a, lot of, a lot of them are probably better than the boys. So. The Baseball Academy has all different types of equipment to help these young athletes succeed. What I do is provide strength and conditioning training. I provide hitting, instruction, uh, catching instruction, all aspects of the game. I offer it here as a service to help kids get better. For a trainer at the academy, it's not only being knowledgeable about the game, but being respected by kids and as well as the parent. Staff is great, very professional, they're very comprehensive. They do everything from conditioning, physical fitness, and they start off at that level. Their qualifications are college level baseball and even professional level baseball. So when you have that type of coaching, the kids really learn a lot. It doesn't matter what level you're at or what position you want to focus on, these trainers are ready to get you to where you want to be. You know, it's, it's obviously a science for, to uh, performing at a high level. For Game On, this is Katie McLean. For more info about the Next Level Academy, visit nlbalv.com. Right now, we'll send it over to Marcus, sitting with UNLV volleyball coach Cindy Frederick. Welcome back into Game On. I'm Marcus Paff, sitting down now with head UNLV volleyball coach Cindy Frederick. Coach, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Marcus. I'm happy to be here. Well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, last season before we shift gears and look ahead. You had a great 2012 year, 18-11 uh, and 11 overall, 10-6 and six in what was a very difficult Mountain West Conference. What did you see this past season from your team that has you excited for the future? I, I think the competitive level of these women has really gone up a great deal. Since we first got here, these, these guys are so much more competitive. They fight every day in practice. They get after it, and they're in much better, better physical condition. So it's great to see. Now, take me to this, uh, this time of year. I think a lot of fans out there may forget you know, once the season's over, a lot of us, it's not top of mind anymore, so we forget that there's still a lot of things going on. What's your world like as a head coach right now? Well, it's a little little different now. NCAA mandates what we can do, so we're only in eight hours a week right now, and of those eight, only two can be in the gym. So we only get to work with our players two hours a week in the gym, and then they're in doing conditioning and other things the other six hours. In the meantime, coaches are out recruiting. Um, every weekend we're gone to a, a tournament. Last weekend was in Denver. This weekend it's here. Weekend before that it was here also. So we we go to Dallas, we go to Atlanta, we go everywhere recruiting, trying to fill those spots for the years to come. Absolutely. Um, and and you, you talked about it. The NCAA regulations say that you can only be with the, the student mm -hmm. athletes so often. Is, does it become incumbent upon some of your seniors then to really you know, step it up at this time of year and, and yeah. call the team together and say, hey, we want to be, be great this next season. Let's keep preparing. Mm -hmm. I, absolutely, it does, Marcus. I think for, for we have a great group of seniors with Maddie and Steph and Cola and, and Caitlin will be a redshirt um, junior, but basically right. a senior. So we tell them all the time, it's on you to organize your team. They organize the captain practices. They do things like that. Then we'll start again in March with 20 hours a week, so okay. at the end of this month. Uh, talk to me a little bit now. Let's shift gears. Look ahead. 2013. That's kind of crazy to think that it's going to be <laughs> yeah. here. The season will be here before you know it. Um, what are your expectations for this group as you enter your third season as the head mm -hmm. coach here at UNLV? I think every year you're striving to get better. Every year you want to improve on what you did the year before. So we we want to make those goals to be the very best we can be. I don't I don't like to come out and say to people we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But we know that we want to be better than we were last year, and that that's our goal. And in anticipation of that, I guess, uh, I'm retreading a little bit, but the summertime, where can players improve most so that they do reach those goals 
Um, this time of year, I should say, where can players improve the most over the summer to lead into the fall so that you're able to, to be where you want to be by the time the season's underway? They have to come back in the fall in the best shape possible because you want to pick up right where you left off in the spring. And our strength training coach, Jason Cabo, does a great job with them. So when they leave here, we expect them to come back in the fall in the same kind of shape, maybe even a little bit better sometimes. Sure. And then the important part is playing. We like them to play doubles and triples and play sand volleyball. Those things over the summer are crucial for them coming back in. Well, I have you here, and I don't always have a volleyball coach at my disposal to throw questions <laughs> to. So, and you brought it up, sand volleyball. Um, what are the, some of the differences between that? How can that make you a better volleyball player uh, in the traditional sense when you're out on the, on the gym floor during the season? Well, you know, if you, if you ever try running in the sand, you know what that does to you right there. Your vertical changes tremendously when you're in the sand. Your, your legs become so much stronger. And then when you go onto a, 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 a wood surface, it just, you're spraying off the floor by then. So it really helps develop your quickness and your speed and your strength as well. Absolutely. And then, uh, Coach, uh, one more before we finish up. Your senior class. I know it's a special mm -hmm. group for you. You yeah. got a lot of young ladies that have done some great things in their time here. Talk to me a little bit about them and, and what you're hoping for them in, in this upcoming year. Well, I, I'm really proud of this group of seniors because they went through a coaching change and they stuck it out with, with my husband and me. Yeah. And yeah. they've become really good leaders and they've become, the, you know, the, the guts of the team, really. So I like their work ethic. I like their, they're good students as well. Uh, you've got Caitlin, Steph, Maddie, all on academic, all conference. So smart young women and they're good volleyball players and, and good people. In and that's really important to us. Good community service people. I think they're great role models for kids. Absolutely. And I know, Coach, uh, the academics in the community uh, have always been two things that are very important to you. So, yes. um, well, I, time flies, I guess, yeah, Coach. But absolutely. thanks for coming on the show today. We appreciate Thank having you. the conversation. And looking forward to the 2013 season. We'll be here absolutely. before we know it. Uh, if you don't know, games are played inside the Cox Pavilion right on campus. It's connected uh, or adjacent to uh, the TNM. Well, have you ever thought that you were talented enough to be a professional athlete? Reporter Honey Love goes inside the SCORE sports exhibit at the Luxor. Have you ever wondered how the pros do this? Or even this? Well, SCORE's interactive sports exhibit gives sports fanatics a chance to become a professional athlete and get their shot in the big league. Guests can uh, look to experience uh, interactive exhibits, and then one of the largest private collections of memorabilia in the country. Located inside the Luxor Hotel and Casino, this 10,000 square foot exhibit holds more than 200 prized pieces throughout eight galleries and is valued in the millions of dollars. Uh, at SCORE, what we try to do is we make the fan feel like they're the athlete, they're the legend. The first thing you do when you come to SCORE is you're going to sign up for your fantasy contract. So you're going to pick what your favorite sport is, what your favorite team is, and you're actually going to enter into a contract with that team. As I began my journey as a professional athlete, I then tested my skill as a football pro in the peripheral vision test. I then tried my hand at hockey with the NHL-themed stick handling drill. Let's just say there was room for lots of improvement. I stopped to pay homage to Babe Ruth and then warmed up my pitching arm. <laughs> Even the pros get a little rusty. Next up, the NASCAR Pit Stop Challenge. <laughs> Adam, I broke it. <laughs> Real, it's on there. <laughs> Although I may not be a race car driver and I may not be the best at pit crew, thanks to SCORE Interactive Sports Exhibit, I can sure try it out. Reporting for Game On, I'm Honey Love. Great stuff, Honey. Time for a quick break, but when we get back, Marcus sits down with volleyball player Madeline Westman. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months. And now, we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to home. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. What you doing, Dad? My favorite thing. Really, Dad? What are you doing? Paying bills. Every month, a stack of them come just as regular as the rain. What's this one? That's a special one, son. I pay it first. How come? It's money for my retirement account. I put some money aside each month just like I was paying a bill. Wouldn't you rather buy something? 
I don't want to work forever, and I don't want you to have to support me in my old age. In a way, I'm buying peace of mind. I'm on the installment plan. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. A double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. We had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. Hey, back again on Game On, I'm Marcus Paff, sitting down now with a, another member of the UNLV volleyball time. This time we're talking to a student athlete, his senior, Maddie Westman. Maddie, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me come. I know you're busy right now, a lot of things going on, um, and that leads me right into my first question. As a student athlete, and in particular volleyball, what's this time of year like for you? You've got the academics going on, you're trying to get better for next season. What's your schedule like? It's, um, it's different from fall, but still just as, you know, packed. Um, we have eight hours a week of volleyball-related activities right now. And then we have, you know, our own cardio that we're putting in. We have um, more of a filled class schedule. Um, this is kind of when we can take our more difficult classes or things that we can't fit into fall semester. We have a lot more volunteer opportunities that during our off-season and a lot more... Um, just a lot more things going on that we yeah. <laughs> don't get to do in the fall. Involved with the community, so. get out and about yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, let's go to the court. 2012 was, was a very good year for you guys. It was. And 2013, I know you have high expectations and high yeah. hopes again of being successful uh, in yeah. the Mountain West. Uh, talk to me a little bit about last season and what made that team so successful and how you think that will translate into the coming year. I think what made us successful last year was that we I think we really bought into what um, our coaches were wanting us to do, and we really believed that we could do, um, that we could win the conference, that we could finish well in the conference. Um, our confidence was definitely up from the the Mountain West Conference tournament um, from our sophomore year, from my sophomore year. Um, so we just, our confidence was up, our ambition was up, we believed in ourselves, and we really bought into the ideas that Cindy and Farouk were telling us. Absolutely, and as, as 2013 approaches, remiss to if I didn't ask you this what are your hopes your expectations for this team um, just that we just want to do the best that we can um, we want to make sure that we do better from last year and you know you don't want to say anything too too specific right now but we just know that we we want to get a lot better from where we were last um, last season and that we can do a lot better and so that's our ambition as the season does get closer uh, for you personally, is that something, uh, goal setting, is that something that's important to you? Do you set individual goals and, and then the team goals, obviously, uh, as you get closer? Yeah, uh, we all had individual meetings with Cindy, and we went over some, some personal goals that we want to fix. Um, so I've got my own little list that I need to work on. And then usually before the season starts, we have a team meeting and come up with team goals. And we, we've got a lot of goals going on Absolutely. <laughs> to work on. Absolutely. We're running a little yeah. bit low on time, but one more for you. Okay. As a senior, and I know you've been a big part of this team for a long time now, yeah. how do you feel moving into that, that senior leadership role? They always talk about, you know, you're a senior now, you really want to, you know, take that. And that's not to say you haven't done that in the past, but is that something that uh, you're really going to take upon yourself this year to, yeah, to be a vocal it's, leader? It's surreal. I really can't believe that I'm already going to be a senior. But that's definitely, I know that it falls onto our shoulders. I remember being a freshman and really looking up to our seniors and our, our upperclassmen, so I know how important it is to, to um, be a good role model for the incoming freshmen and underclassmen. So I know that that's a really important role that I need to do. Absolutely. Well, Maddie, we're out of time. It flies by here on the show, <laughs> but I appreciate you taking some time to come on and chat with us about it. Best of luck in the upcoming 2013 season. It's going to be here before we know, know it. So um, good luck again, and, and again, thanks for stopping by. Thank so. you. Thanks, Marcus. March 9th was senior night for the Rebels, and UNLV did it in style. They honored Quintrell Thomas, Justin Hawkins, and the mayor, Anthony Marshall, before the game. The seniors walked out of the tunnel with their family and friends, where they were presented with roses and their jerseys framed, led by Anthony Marsh, who averaged 10 points, 6 assists, and 4 rebounds this season. UNOV also whited out the Thomas and Mack Center by having all the fans wear right. Time for a quick break. When we get back, we'll have the highlights for the UNOV Fresno State game. Also, we'll take a look at some paintballing. Stay with us. You could choose to join a gang. You could try the latest drugs. 
You could even choose to drop out of school. You can try to avoid the difficulties in life with a quick fix, or you can face them head on. She did. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Now what you see here is not combat training. It's actually the sport of paintball. Paintball is a game in which you eliminate your opponent by tagging them with gelatin shell capsules that are shot from a marker, more commonly known as a paintball gun, which are powered by compressed air. This footage is from the Bonehead Paintball Arena across the street from the UNLV campus. Like a lot of other sports, paintball can be played either in teams or individually. Realistically, paintball can be described as a combination of the childhood games Tag and Hide and Go Seek. Only a little bit more challenging and sophisticated, of course. There are two styles of playing paintball. Scenario, which consists of going out in an actual land battlefield, playing for hours. And speedball, which is played in a closed off arena and is played for a few minutes only. The number of players on each team can vary, limited only by the size of the playing field. Coming in all ages and lifestyles, men and women play paintball in over 40 countries worldwide and has become one of the world's most exciting outdoor participation sports. Well, Jordan, I mean, uh, I think you and I might have to take a weekend off and get out on one of these paintball fields and enjoy ourselves a little bit. Well, actually, I'm going paintballing this Sunday for one of my friend's birthday if you want to come along. Oh, man, I might have to do that. I've never actually been paintballing. How crazy is that? Oh, it's pretty cool. A lot of people complain about it, but it's not that bad. Is it? It's not painful? Not really. But um, from paintballing to basketball, UNLV hosted Fresno State for senior at the Thomas and Mack Center. Rebels started the game off going inside to senior Quintrell Thomas, who had his first attempt rejected, but stayed with it and scored the first two points of the game. Early in the game, the Rebels did a great job defending the rim. Fresno State's Jerry Brown tries his own luck, but gets introduced to Mike Moser and is denied. In swing possession, Anthony Marshall surveys the court. The Bulldogs have miscommunication on defense, and bang, Marshall knocks down the open three, forcing the Bulldogs to take a timeout. UNOV up early 10-4. After the timeout, Fresno State realized that going inside wasn't working. The Bulldogs started to move the ball and it turned into a three-point contest led by Kevin Foster. Foster couldn't miss from behind the arc, going five for five from downtown in the first half. After the three from Foster, Rebels find Kim Burks down low for the reverse layup. Fresno State then responds with another three by Kevin Olikibe. But UNOV answers right back with Marshall driving and dishing to Savon Goodman for an easy two. Rebels had no answer for Foster in the first half and would not learn from their mistakes. Here Foster knocks down two more wide open triples, then Leaky Bay finds Foster down low for another strong layup. Marshall then drives baseline, finding a cutting Moser to score a two-handed throwdown. Rebels finally get an easy transition bucket when Bryce Jones steals the inbounds and flushes the dunk over Leaky Bay. Leaky Bay soon gets his payback after sinking his third shot from long distance in the first half. With 2.30 left in the half, there goes that man, Kevin Foster, drilling another one from behind the arc. Bulldogs hit 8 of 12 threes in the first half, led by Kevin Foster's 19 points. Next possession down, the Anthony's connects as Bennett throws down a lob from Marshall. Bulldogs finally miss from three, and the Rebels take off running. Marshall finds an open Justin Hawkins in the corner for a transition three. UNLV goes into the half down by five. Rebels come out of the first half by going inside. Marshall finds Moser by all by himself under the basket. Then Moser takes the contact and still finishes the layup. After the missed tip-in, Robert Upshaw gets another opportunity and powers down the putback over Moser. Bulldogs go up by eight after Anderson goes around Moser for the reverse layup. Bryce Jones gets beats off the dribble, but the shot blocker Kim Birch is there to clean up the mess, which then leads to a Rebels fast break. Jones then pushes the ball down the middle, gets fouled, absorbs the contact, and throws a wild shot up that still finds a way to go in. 
Bulldogs would then answer with a highlight play of their own when Tyler Johnson goes above the rim and completes the beautiful lob from Oli Kibe. Moser attempts to get things going in the paint but has his shot sent back to Cinder. Marshall then finds Caden Reinhardt for his only field goal and the Rebels' last one in the game at the 9 minute 52 seconds mark. Rebels lose 61 to 52. The 52 points was a season low. Here are the Rebels after the game. Ultimately, you know, um, Fresno played great, had a great game plan. You know, they executed very well and, you know, they got the win. Uh, it wasn't a way we wanted to go out, but things happen. You know, we, we definitely got to play better, you know, sustain a lot more energy throughout the games. We're going to sit into break now. Stay with us. We'll be back with you soon. is the color that your skin was meant to be, no longer beautiful. Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults 15 to 29. And one person dies from melanoma every hour. It's time. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. I like to see cupcakes falling from the sky. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. Hey, back on Game On, time now to check in on our UNLV Player of the Week. This week's honoree, Ace Matias, Honey Love, has more. Ace Matias is the only sophomore on the 2013 UNLV men's tennis team. Transferring from the University of Utah, Matias solidified a position as a starter and helped the 68th ranked Rebel squad to an 8-0 undefeated record at home thus far. This communication studies major from Torrance, California, improved his individual record to 16-6 when he defeated number 86 ranked Lance Wilhelm of the U.S. Air Force Academy 6-3-6-1. In the game against UC Irvine, Matias won two of three matches in the doubles competition, as well as a 6-1 and 6-2 victory over Ryan Chung at the number one position in the singles competition. Growing up the son of a tennis instructor, it's no wonder that this talented athlete has tennis in his blood. Ace Matias, you are Game On's Player of the Week. Thank you, honey, and congrats to Ace Matias for being this week's Player of the Week. You know, Marcus, speaking of the Players of the Week, how about UNLV Rebels honored by the Mountain West? Yeah, the running Rebels uh, really took home a lot of hardware this week. We have to bring them up. Anthony Bennett, the Mountain West Freshman of the Year, as well as a first-team All-Mountain West selection. Ken Birch was named Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. He's also on the All-Defensive Team. And finally, the senior, Anthony Marshall, named All-Defensive Team, as well as second-team All-Mountain West. And flip it over to the women's side, Kelly Thompson selected to the first team All Mountain West, and Rajan Varon, a freshman, named Freshman of the Year. Congratulations to all of them. Much deserved. Now it's that time in the show where we take a look at what's upcoming in the world of UNLV athletics. Tomorrow, men's baseball will finish their series at San Diego State at 1 p.m. Then on March 25th, they will play San Diego State at 6 p.m. Four days later, on the 29th through the 30th, men's baseball will begin their series against Air Force here in Las Vegas. 
April 5th through the 7th, they will be going to California to play their series against Fresno State. At the same time, the women's softball team will also be playing Fresno State, but they'll be playing here in Las Vegas. But they do have two games before that. Women's softball will be in Colorado to play University of Northern Colorado on March 27th. They will stay in Colorado to play their series against CSU March 28th through the 30th. Men's tennis will be playing at home for the rest of March. On the 25th, they will play Southern Utah at 10 a.m. and they will play Idaho State at 2 p.m. On the 28th, they will play Reno at 11 a.m. Then on the 30th, they will play Cal Poly at 11 a.m. And the 31st, they play San Diego State. The men's tennis team will then travel to Colorado to play Air Force Academy on April 7th. Their last home game will be on April 12th versus Boise State at 12 p.m. The women's tennis team will be traveling to San Diego to play San Diego State on Friday, Boise State on Saturday, and New Mexico on Sunday. Then on April 13th, they will be home at, against Reno at 10 a.m. After we get back from the break, we'll have a recap of today's show. Stay with us. For others, it may have just been a summer job. But for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescueman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today, and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Winston! Just one more inning, Grandma! Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Welcome back from break. Marcus, what introduced you the most today? Well, that paintball thing sounds pretty interesting, man. I, again, I've never had a chance to do it, so I'm excited to get out. I hope you can show me some of the ropes, and I hope I don't get killed right off the bat, because uh, knowing me, it's, it's not going to go well. You definitely got to get out there and try it out, <laughs> man. You really got to do it. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, but. that does it for this week's episode of Game On. If you want to catch up on previous episodes of Game On, go to our website, unlvtv.unlv.edu. I'm Jordan Harrison. And I'm Marcus Papp. Have a good one, Las Vegas.